Hello. In this video, I'm going to solve the following problem for you. Let P be a polynomial such that uh, P of X equals to P of 0 plus P of 1 times X plus P of 2 times X squared for all real numbers X. What is the numerical value of P of phi, where phi equals to square root of 5 plus 1 all over 2 is the golden ratio? That would be a good idea if you pause the video at this point and try to solve the problem yourself first. If you do the calculations correctly, the answer to the problem will be zero. Okay, so let us try to solve this problem. P of x is a polynomial fitting this equation. You, uh, this is always valid for all values of x. So you see that the right-hand side is a polynomial of second degree. It's a quadratic polynomial. Okay, so, so I have a polynomial that is equal to this expression, which itself is a second degree polynomial, because if p is a polynomial, this is just a number, that's a number, that's a number. So this is just a quadratic a polynomial which is supposed to be equal to the polynomial which we don't know yet completely. Okay, so this means that the polynomial p of x should be of second degree because it is equal to the uh, second degree polynomial. And on the other hand, we know that a polynomial of second degree can be written as ax squared plus bx plus c. This is the most general form of a second degree polynomial. Okay. So I put these two equal for all values of x, so I want to make this identical to this. So it means that the coefficient of x squared should match with the coefficient of x squared there. So what does it mean? It means that the coefficient of x squared, which is p of 2, is supposed to be equal to a. And the coefficient of x, which is p of 1, should be equal to the coefficient of x here, which is b. And finally, the constant term p of 0 should match with the constant term of my polynomial. So this is what I get. But now, this is not that hard to see what happens. p of 2 is a. This is my p of x. I want to calculate p of 2. So I replace every appearance of x with 2. So this becomes 4a plus 2b is equal to c, plus c is equal to a. Yes? And what about this one? Very similar. This means p of 1 is equal to 1. It means that if I replace every appearance of x with 1, the answer is supposed to be b. If I replace x with 1, 1 squared is 1, so it becomes a, and this becomes b, and this c is supposed to be equal to b. And similarly here, but even simpler, because this means if I replace x with 0, this will be gone, this will be gone, c will be left, c is supposed to be equal to c. Okay, so that is more or less a redundant piece of information, because for every choice of c, c of course is equal to c. So you might think that you are a little bit in trouble, because we have three unknowns, in principle, we have three equations, but one of them is useless because this is an evident piece of information. So we cannot rely on it. It doesn't give you any extra information, but we can rely on them. But then unfortunately, you have only two equations in three unknowns. You might think that it is not possible to answer the question. But be careful. They are not asking you to calculate, to determine P fully. They're asking you to calculate P of a particular number. So don't give up easily, hope for the best to see what happens, okay? So let us at least algebraically manipulate these things, so make them simple. For example, here this b and that b are gone. So here, I move a to the other side, so c becomes minus a, okay? And then what happens here? I can move this to the other side, so it becomes 3a plus 2b, and then what do I have here? Uh, it becomes uh, plus c minus a. I moved a to the other side, so this becomes 3a plus b plus c equals to 0. But I also use this piece of information here. 
a c is minus a, 3a minus a becomes 2a plus 2b equals to 0. And then what do I get from here? 2b is minus 2a, I divide by 2, so b is minus a. Yes? Okay. But I cannot go any further because unfortunately the last piece of information is evidently true. So, but what can I write? I can say that the polynomial I am looking for, instead of having three unknowns, now I have only one unknown, yes? What can I do? I can, instead of a, I just write a, so it becomes ax squared, but instead of b, I can also put minus a, so it becomes minus ax, and instead of c, I can also put minus a. This is better than nothing, because instead of having three unknowns, I have only one unknown a. It is not hard to see that you can factor a out, and then you will get x squared minus x minus 1. Okay, so in principle, if I ask you what is p of 5, you put 5 there, it becomes 25 minus 20, uh, 520 minus 119, the answer is 19a. And there is no way for you to actually calculate a from the information given in the problem. Okay, but phi is an exception here. Okay, so that is why it's a little bit uh, counterintuitive from the beginning. If you want to anticipate all the details from the very beginning, this is one of those problems. It's not of that nature. Okay, because uh, you already know, if you have a little bit of experience in math problems, you already knew that you will not be able to determine P of X completely, entire, entirely. You knew that there will be one parameter left, and that is correct, and this, you might think, will affect the calculation. Yes, it would have affected the calculations if they have asked P of something except this golden ratio, or square root of 5 minus 1 over 2. These are the only two numbers, probably, that you can calculate this exactly, because if you replace phi there, my goal is to calculate p of phi, then it becomes a phi squared minus phi minus 1. But this combination is very famous for the golden ratio. This is 0. And it is not hard to convince yourself that this is 0. So let me calculate that here for you. So I want to calculate phi squared minus phi minus 1. So what is phi? Phi is the number up there. So I replace it here, square root of 1, square root of 5 plus 1 squared, divided by 4, yes? What I'm doing, I am just taking this and put it here, so the numerator squared, the denominator squared. And then I have minus phi, and then I have minus 1. Okay, so if you don't mind, let us take the common denominator to be 4. So I have to copy and paste this part, but if you don't mind, let me use the square rule to open it up. The first one is squared 5, 2 times the first one times the second one, plus the second one is squared 1, minus sign this to this 2 times, so I have to multiply 2 here. I have also minus sign, so it becomes minus 2 squared to 5, minus 2, because this minus sign goes for both of them. And then I have a minus sign four times, yes? Okay, now look, look what happens, very interestingly. These are gone. Okay, five plus one is six. Minus two minus four is minus six. Six minus six is zero. This becomes zero over four, so the answer becomes zero. Okay, so this combination is zero. So this means that I can go, come back to the problem. A is still not known, but we don't need it because coincidentally, this combination for the Gordon ratio is zero. So the answer as predicted by the problem is zero. Okay, so I hope that this video was useful for you. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye. Thank you.